arrived this day aboard the Lady Sinclair. Captain William Bly, newly appointed governor of the colony of New South Wales and its territories, by the gracious pleasure of His Majesty King George III. Well, gentlemen, for good or evil, Governor Bly. Bounty Bly. Bly. And how is your journey, sir? I've had better and worse. No, by your leave, I'd prefer to stay. Hot climate, I've heard. It's deucet cold today. We have extremes of weather. I shan't be sorry to leave. Would you find the post exacting? Exacting. Hunter told me I'd learn. I have. Perhaps you'd be kind enough to instruct me. The liquor traffic, convict rebellion, drunkenness, prostitution, a lack of respect for authority. There are floods one year, famine the next. There are feuds, petitions, complaints, abuse of the natives. Want me to go on? Please. There's corruption and greed. Men growing fat on the misery of the convicts. And convicts waiting to escape and murder, given the chance. Yet there are some who look upon this land as their home. The work every hour God makes to carve out a place for themselves. Perhaps with the help of God. And some from you, sir. In time they will. Tell me about Mr. MacArthur. The hero of the fleece. Jack Bodice. You have a chance to judge for yourself. For whichever way you turn, you may be sure you will find Mr. MacArthur. You'll discover, as I did, that he has many powerful friends and is a considerable enemy. Oh, Bly has settled into Government House, and King is about to sail, nursing his gout while he awaits the tide. Mm -hmm. What's the feeling in the town? Incredulity. We are about to be governed by a 50-year-old sea captain who's had two ships in mutiny. I hear his daughter is charming. Uncommon handsome, ma'am. But not, if you'll permit me, above present company. I hear you are much missed in Sydney. As I miss my friends there and my house. It was a temporary measure after the uprising at Castle Hill. My wife prefers her own home. Of course. And we shall visit to pay our respects to His Excellency once the harvest is in. You may have to wait your turn. He's let it be known the door to Government House stands open to any man. Free settler, emancipist, even convict. Impossible. And so I fear is Captain Bly. He listens to every complaint from every quarter. Monopoly, they say. Extortion. And he listens. Good night, Mum. Aren't you happy, Emily? It's different here, Mum. Yes, I'm afraid it is. If you are unhappy, I'll arrange a post for you in town. Well, I want to stay where you are. Good night, Emily. Good night, Mum. Good night, sir. Ellen is being unkind to her. I hadn't noticed. She resents other servants. She always has, which is why we've kept so few. Speak to her. I thought a word from you might have more effect. You're the mistress of the house, Connor. If you're not satisfied with Ellen, we'll dispose of her. It's easily settled. Good night, Stephen. Good night. You want me to go, Mum. Is that it? That depends on you, Ellen. You're a free woman. Free? Free to be dismissed. And no place to go after 16 years. So long? Yes. I feared this all the while. I knew one day I'd be turned out. Though, it's not as if I can blame you for hating me. I don't. Things were not always of my choosing. 
I dare say you know what I mean, Mum. That is quite enough, Ellen. I'll pack my clothes. No. You may stay, if that's what you wish. Treat Emily and the other servants more kindly, and we'll forget we ever had this conversation. Good day, sir. Boys. Mr. Harvey. They're making a tour of the educational establishments. Are these all your pupils, sir? All but two, Your Excellency. Few pupils. You make a subsistence. I manage, sir. You may sit down, continue your studies. Long established, Mr. Harvey? Uh, six months, sir. Need a writing. None of us can read it. Yes, sir. Do you have uh, sufficient material, sir? Uh, paper is scarce, sir, and slates often difficult to obtain. Make a note of it, Griffin. See what can be done. Your class seems to consist entirely of the lower orders. Respectable people don't allow their children to mix with those of convicts. Or ex-convicts. I see. I don't think you do. With respect, sir, I'm not prepared to shut my door on boys who've... Well, committed no crime. Just to satisfy the prejudices of the free settlers. So I... To teach the sons of convicts. We must have another talk, Mr. Harvey. Tonight at Government House, six o'clock. Hey, lads. <clears throat> Good day, Your Excellency. Tidiness, neatness, and persevere with your studies. Man's been everywhere, complaining about roads, inspecting bridges, visiting farms. They seem good intentions. Emancipist farms, Connor. Tramping through pig pens and hovels, encouraging ex-convicts to air their grievances. Did you dismiss Ellen? No, Stephen. I've decided she's to stay. As you wish. Well, go on. I was with Mr. Mannion for six years, sir. Tutor to his son at first, then other duties. I resigned. Why? I didn't care for the work. It's a personal matter. The sons of convicts. And ex-convicts. They pay for your services. When they can, sir. They can't pay. They try, Your Excellency. Answer the question. If they can't pay. I find it difficult to turn the boys away. Mm. Besides, it's not always the parents' fault. If they earn money and their employers withhold it, convicts aren't allowed to sue for debt. I'm aware of the injustices, sir. I'm talking about your impecunious school. That is my concern. I need someone for extra secretarial duties evenings. Would that situation appeal to you? Indeed, sir. It will be useful. Uh, two guineas a month. Start tomorrow. Good night, Mr. Harvey. Good night. Your Excellency. Good night.
Dear Mrs. Mannion. I trust you will pardon the intrusion, Your Excellency. At your service, Mr. MacArthur. What is your business? Oh, pray, don't let me interrupt your walk. If I may take a turn with you. Delighted. Charming. What is? This garden. So different to when I first came here 16 years ago. The shrubs have made astonishing growth. No doubt. But you did not come here to talk of garden, sir. I confess it. I came on a subject which occupies much of my interest. Which interest? I believe yours have varied, sir. And include anything which can be bought and sold. Is enterprise illegal? My venture has contributed greatly to the progress of this colony. That, sir, is a matter of opinion. I have my own plans for progress, sir. And I do not include the traffic of liquor or allowing privilege and monopoly to flux at the expense of others. I came on the subject of wool. Wool! Ah, oh, yes, I dare say. As you know, Lord Camden supports my venture. During my absence in England... Whether you were sent under arrest, sir? Under arrest, as you say, unjustly as it turned out, and where, as I am trying to tell you, I was awarded 5,000 acres, which I hold on recommendation of the Privy Council, and on which I request you grant title. Damn your impudence, sir. You're trying to teach me my duty. I am attempting to obtain Your Excellency's goodwill and request the assignment of further shepherds. No, sir. I will not withdraw labor and set it to watch your sheep. Nor will I endorse 5,000 of the finest acres in the land so you may increase your fortune. When the prime necessity here, sir, is agriculture. And that, sir, is that. Good day to you. Unscrupulous, mischief making upstart. Tradesman. Oh, Papa. I'm sorry, man. An easy place, this may be. Caligula. That's the name for him. The man's an oaf and a tyrant. He's disapproved of some of the magistrates. And taken Sergeant Harris off the bench. And perhaps, gentlemen, we'll learn to miss Governor King. <laughs> but if you'll pardon me, I have a long journey. Where does he stand? Where he's always stood. For Stephen Mannion. Father's determined on trouble. Oh, I've never taken sides in these squabbles. Nor do I intend to now. To whom are you writing? Aunt Bertha. Convey to her my kindest regards. Yes, we'll stay out of it. And away from town for the present. Dear Mr. Harvey. Dear Mark. Mm. How long since you pardoned? A year, sir. Are these children hungry? Sometimes, sir. Yours, I take you. Are you churched? Yes. Six months ago. What's your name, young man? Andrew, sir. Andrew. You look thin. <laughs> See the storekeeper at the Hawkesbury's to furnish you with food, meat. But how would we pay, sir? We'll pay in grain when the harvest has got in. Tell him I said so. We'll mend that cart. I'll be by again.
call Miss Ellen for the keys and get the stores unloaded. Aye. Now, there's a sight for a man to come home to. I'm sure I don't know what you mean, Mr. Byrne. The master's waiting for his post. I'll warrant he is. Fine to do in Parramatta. Some for the governor and as many against. So a scarf. It matches the color of your eyes. I'll be off with you. I've work to finish. Oh, sir. Just asking Miss uh, Emily where you were. Here's the mail. And the copies of the Sydney Gazette. Not before time, Mr. Byrne. If he said thank you, his mouth would crack. Hey, what's bothering him? How would I know? <laughs> what a cranky bitch. See if I tell either of them what I heard in town about Mr. Harvey. What you hear about Mr. Harvey? Oh, you wouldn't know him before your time. Oh, please, Mr. Byrne, what you hear? Worth a kiss, is it? It's worth a smack in the face if you don't tell me. <laughs> Secretary? Part-time, ma'am. And doing his school as well. Is it good news, do you think? I don't know. If the school were prospering... I'm sure it is. It was clever of you. There was no letter for me. Not that I know of, ma'am. The provisions all tally, sir. Will you check them? No, you can lock the store. Spring comes in a April. April. But in New South Wales, it comes in September. September. Why is that, Mom? Later. Take the book. Yes, Mom. Lessons? Yes, she learns quickly. All those years at the orphanage, and no one taught her to read or write. Mm -hmm. To her purpose. Still, if it amuses you. Your mail, my dear. Aunt Bertha and one from Mrs. King. Honor. Mrs. King says they had a calm journey home. Good. I've been giving some thought to our future. Indeed. Poor King's health is still no better. Connor, will you listen to me? Yes, Stephen. I've had a letter from Patrick. Oh, what news of him? He confirms his desire to return to the colony. He sails on the first available ship. I am glad. When he is settled here, we are leaving. We're going back to Ireland. Why? Among other things, this trouble with Bly may get out of hand. I don't believe that's the reason. Can you advance me another? Then it will suffice. And if I won't go? Oblige me by not being stupid. You'll go. And as soon as possible. <laughs> Come along, dear. Oh, sir. There's all kinds of talk about an order. Could you tell me what's read? Oh, the proclamation. Aye. His Excellency henceforth prohibits the exchange of spirits and other liquors as payment for grain, food, wearing apparel, or any other commodity whatever by any person without exception. But how do I sell the wheat? Take it to the commissary and exchange it for coin at the price the governor's set, and then buy what you need. 
Can I truly do that? And not only can, but must. But it's, it's better, isn't it? Aye. It is. Oh, thank you, sir. Come and have a drink, <laughs> darling. Mrs. Putland, allow me to see you home. Please, Mr. Harvey, if you'd be so kind. Church, your lads insult my daughter. I'm sure it's a mistake. Mistake? Sir. No man in the regiment would wish mistake, to harm Mrs. Butler. It was witness, Mr. Harvey. Uh, witness, uh, appalling conduct. Uh, as for your so-called regiment, they're a pack of knaves, jailbirds. Sir, uh, I will not have my daughter treated in this fashion. Her husband is gravely ill. I'm very concerned. To be publicly Harry. mocked at a time like this. By your lobster coated rubble. If His uh, Excellency would allow me to speak, I'm ah! trying to apologize. If there was such an incident, the men will be disciplined. I want them in the guardhouse, sir. Your corps has been here too long. They're not soldiers, they're bullies and mercenaries. May I protest? No, you may not protest, sir. Neither the troops nor their officers were meant to profit by their position here nor to control the courts. You become a damn nuisance. You become dangerous. The lot of you. The sooner you replace, the better for the colony. Good night. Major. Lost my temper again. Where were we? The uh, manifest, sir. Uh, Mr. MacArthur's ship. The manifest. Yes. Oh. A copper still for brewing liquor imported by MacArthur. <laughs> Another by Captain Abbott. Damn them! They know the law! Do they think I'm to be duped? and intimidated the way King was. These stills, being illegal, are to be confiscated and put in the government store until such time they can be sent back to England. And of Jack Bodice, wants to contest that in a court of law. Let him have the pleasure. produced evidence to the court to prove that the two copper stills were taken from my house on the 22nd instant without my consent. It was, as has been admitted, a directive of the governor and executed by Mr. Robert Campbell. Such are the facts. It would therefore appear that a British subject living in a British settlement where British laws are established by royal patent, has had his property wrested from him by a non-accredited individual without any reason except it was the governor's order. It is therefore, gentlemen, for you to determine whether this be the tenure on which Englishmen hold their property in New South Wales. As the judge advocate, Mr. Atkins, I must, in point of duty as indeed honor, object to him. His determination is weak, his opinion infirm, and his knowledge of the law insignificant. 
leave it, Mr. Harvey. I'll do it tomorrow. Yes, sir. Good night, Your Excellency. That speech of MacArthur's, it wasn't a defense. It was a declaration of war. Welcome back, Patrick. Father? I trust it was a good journey? Indeed, sir. Thank you. We'll collect your luggage. Connor's waiting at the house. First landed in Botany Bay. In which year? Take your slates, go to Observatory Hill, and write me a full description of all the ships you can see in the harbour. It was unwise of me to interrupt your class. I fear it was not a good excuse. Ships in the harbour. I had no idea you were in town. Only until tomorrow. Patrick has returned. Tell me, how are things with you? Oh, much improved since I took the liberty of writing to you. You wrote? About the school and my post with the governor. Perhaps like the letters I wrote. To me? Indeed to you. Perhaps like them you never sent yours. Oh, but I did. But I never had it. It was months ago. I received no letter. It was indiscreet of me. Though there was nothing to cause offence. What was in it? Oh, simply an account of my days. I would have welcomed it. It was quite dull, really. Well, my work and the troubles that beset the town. Everything I wanted to say was left out. Tell me. I'm unable to. Please. I wanted to write of my... my admiration for you. No, not admiration. Far more than that. I've no right to speak to you of this. Perhaps one day. There'll be no one day. In a month or two, we're to go home to Ireland. He's determined to put half the world between us. You must know of my feelings for you. My stupidity caused that. And mine. If what I feel for you is stupid. Mrs. Mannion didn't say where. Uh, Mrs. Abbott, I think, sir. Mrs. Abbott is in Parramatta. Well, then, some other lady. I didn't catch the name. I'm sure Connor has many friends in town, Father. Oh, yes, sir. There's lots and... I'll make some tea. The boys will be back. I must go. I'll walk some of the way. No, I should not have come. Why, Mark? You were saying about Bly? Yes, the colony is divided. Reformer or tyrant, we hear very little else. 
Connor. Patrick, I am sorry mm, to be late. My, how you've grown. I was kept gossiping. Did you have a pleasant journey? Hasn't he grown, Stephen? Indeed. Now, I'm due at the commissary. We'll leave for Beltrasno in the morning. Put it well in the hall, boy. You call that a joint? You're building a cat of the yard, boy, or not a head house? Now put it together proper. Morning, Master Patrick. Mr. Evans. Good to see you back, sir. He changes now, I warrant. Five years, bound to. You heard about Mr. Murray's murder, sir? And that convict Finn, his escape? I heard. Born idle, sir, and a troublemaker. We're well rid of him. Now put your back into it! Down to the river. It was always my favorite spot. Mark and I used to walk to it. Your father's looking for you. There's been some more thieving of stores. Connor, why did Mark leave? Is there some matter between you and father? It's nothing. You'd best not keep him waiting. It was two nights ago, sir. Nobody heard a thing. All right, Mr. Byrne. It's them natives, sir. They'd steal the shirt off your back whilst you're buttoning your trousers. That's all, Byrne. I don't believe it was natives. Why not, sir? Patrick? Well, this will be your concern soon. To notice that these boards have been removed and then replaced. Natives? <laughs> I doubt it. Then who? That's a question I've often asked myself. For years now, cattle, tools, fruit trees. <laughs> Natives stealing fruit trees? Hardly. Escaped convicts. Perhaps. Well, you don't think it was me, sir? There's always been this rumor about a youth. A red-headed youth who trades with the settlers along the river. If you mean who I think you do, sir, he's dead. Drowned years ago. I never thought so then, Ellen. I hope I'm wrong. Mr. McCarthy has lost the sheep. Doesn't know where to find them. <laughs> Come on, maybe you taste nothing but the best. Come on. You're no fool, Johnny. Yeah. We'll fatten them up. I need them for winter. Hey, life's good. I never felt I'd be free like this again. <sighs> We'll plant some more crops, and then we'll steal some more of Mannion's cattle. Hey, not yet. Let's not stir them up and have the soldiers after us. We'll take when we need. That'll be time enough. Ellen, I want to talk to you. Me, sir? I thought it was Emily you had an eye for. Don't take that tone. What are you doing? For a minute, I thought it was your father talking. Look! I'm trying to help. How? He suspects Johnny. Have you told him he's alive? No. And that you saw him down by the river before you went to England? No. Will you? I don't know. It is Johnny, isn't it? You know it is. But I'd be saying even if I thought so. Have you ever seen him? 
you ever do. Make him stop. Or I'm duty bound to say what I know. There'd be a warrant. And if they catch him, a rope. Do you think I want that any more than you? With Nathan Tandy, and he took me by the hand. And he said, how's dear old Ireland, and how does she stand? She's the most distressful country that I have ever seen. For the hanging men and women, for the wearing of the green. Love is a pleasing, love is teasing. Love is a pleasure when first is new. Eat up, my friends. Eat and drink your fill. It's all on Mr. Mannion. It's only me. It's a good party for all the world, like I was home in County Whitlow. The skins ain't so different, nor the words after all. Hey, what's up, Johnny? Nothing. Uh, you fancy that girl, do you? Nilly. It's the natural order of things. You're a grown man. It's time. If I take a wife, I have to go away. Where? I uh, have to build a hut. Because of me? No. One man, one woman, one hut. It's uh, best. It's your hut. Oh, I'll build another hut in the next valley, then I can visit. I will talk about that. You go back and give the girl a smile. We'll sort things out. <laughs> we'll sort things out. Stephen, I'd like to take Emily back to Ireland with us. Why? I'm fond of her. Perhaps. But Patrick's this minute left for Sydney to see the agent and book us passage. Besides, she'd be out of place there. Had some good years, Johnny, but it's time to move on. You get wed, you build the hut. You live in it and be happy. I took a share of food, and you'll find the canoe across the river downstream. I reckon the colony is big enough now for me to find somewhere they won't know my face. So don't fret for me. Stay free like men were meant to. God bless you, Johnny. MacArthur, he tears up the warrant, see? For arrest. Says, tell the governor to shove it. <laughs> or was you that effect? Wouldn't go to court. Wouldn't go, they say. Bastard. Put his eye on Emily.
to Finn! <laughs> Murderers. Take him into the house. Ma'am, please. The house. Take him in. Do you hear me? He's dead. Disgraced me. You know that. It was murder. Inhuman, cold blooded murder. I think you've lost your reason. God knows I've tried. Tried? Yes, Connor, I have tried. I built this house for you, but you never cared for it. Perhaps in Ireland. The wretch was a convict, for heaven's sake. The convict was a man. His name was Matthew Finn. He was a gardener once in County Wicklow. And he believed that freedom was something rare. He forfeited his freedom, Connor. Can't you see that? He was a criminal agitator. Now, would you encourage that and have us endure another uprising like Castle Hill? The law must be respected. It's all we have for our protection, and without it, Will you not join me at dinner? you. I've been looking for you. Well, will you walk with me? I'm on my way to Government House. Look what's happening. There are rumors. All I hear is MacArthur and the office. If MacArthur refuses to recognize the court... Well, then Bly will issue another warrant. Well, where do the military stand? Against the governor. It's as good as rebellion. I pray God it won't come to that. He's expecting me. Yes, of course. Uh, he'll dictate letters late into the night to the Secretary of State. And they call him Caligula. His daughter's afraid. Her husband's dying. 
But I've seen him kind to children, settlers, and penniless schoolmasters. I'm glad we met, Patrick. If I was you, I'd ride for Beltrasna and warn them. Mark, I have to ask you, what are your feelings toward my stepmother? Respect and admiration. Good night, Patrick. Cold, Mum. Come inside. What's that? Mama. I will forget you. Richard. I can't. He doesn't come here anymore. Oh, for God's sake, you leave him be. You go back where you came from. <laughs> Who was it? Who was here? God Almighty. God. Inside, sir. Quick. Who did it? We can't get any sense out of Helen, sir. She was holding this and a window broken. She must have seen something, sir. Helen, who did this? I did. I don't believe it. Believe what you like. I killed him. <laughs> 